Good evening, Commonwealth, and thanks for watching the Channel 2 News. I'm Ashley McDowell. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. Autopsies have been conducted on bodies that have been sitting in the morgue. Also tonight, DPS is searching for a suspicious vehicle and operator that have been lingering around people's homes. And PSS is requesting funds due to a Supreme Court decision. In sports, only three weeks in and we have the best basketball game of the year. Stay with us, these stories and more are next. phone you want now on the best network and a plan that gives you endless data on chat, social, and music apps. Tell your Docomo Pacific rep you want now with access. Docomo Pacific, better together. Some conditions apply. A new year. A new decade. Brings new opportunities. At Pacific Insurance Underwriters, we are happy to help. Rest assured, Marianas. At one of Saipan's beaches, this mother lays about a hundred eggs under the cover of darkness. She hides her nest as best she can and then slowly makes her way back to the ocean. The eggs hatch and the babies head for the sea where they will face a daily dose of danger. Just one in a thousand will make it to adulthood. Those that do will one day lay their own eggs Sea turtles are protected under CNMI law. If you see one that is stranded or if you see illegal activity, call the hotline at Off a day, Tiruwami, and good evening, Commonwealth. Today is Thursday, January 16th, 2020. Families of deceased relatives will finally get their remains back following the completion of several autopsies. Autopsies have been completed on four bodies that have been sitting in the morgue for quite some time. According to the Department of Public Safety, on Tuesday, January 14th, 2020, autopsies were conducted by medical examiner Dr. Rachel Lang who flew in from Hawaii for the day. On December 13, 2019, two female bodies identified as Lim Hua Choi and Ra Na Lim were found dead at the Korean restaurant that produces rice cakes located in San Antonio. Dr. Lang has confirmed the cause of death for both females was due to a gunshot, ruling it as a homicide. The bodies will be released back to the families. On November 25th, a decomposed body was found near Bird Island in Marpee, and has been identified as a male. But due to no dental or medical records or missing persons report, the identity is still undetermined. Dr. Lang has also classified the cause of death as undetermined because the advanced state of decomposition. Dr. Lang did state the victim had a fractured collarbone and fractured ribs on the right side. She states the injuries are consistent of a fall and that the body was in water for quite a long period of time. X-rays of the victim's teeth and DNA have been documented in case any records are found in the future. And the autopsy report of a fourth body that has been sitting in the morgue has been forwarded to the AG's office. On December 16th, two vehicles collided in front of the Shell gas station in Puerto Rico that killed one male. DPS PIO Adrian Pangalinen states the report on the body and name cannot be released at this time, as it is part of an ongoing case. Dr. Lang has been a medical examiner for 10 years. The last medical examiner to perform an autopsy on Saipan was Guam's forensic pathologist, Dr. Aurelio Espinola, who retired in January of 2019. A suspicious vehicle is roaming the streets and around people's homes, and the Department of Public Safety is seeking your help in locating the car and the owner. 
DPS received a call around 12.30 p.m. yesterday reporting a blue Nissan Versa parked in front of the caller's home in Papago with the front and back plates covered in black tape. The vehicle had black tint and the suspect wore a black hooded jacket. Nothing was reported stolen. Since then, officers have received several more calls reporting the vehicle with the plates still covered in tape, lingering around homes and on the roadways. Police are patrolling the island to find the vehicle. No criminal activity has been reported at this point, but DPS, if you do see the vehicle, to call 911. The Board of Education met for the second time this week after receiving answers from the Supreme Court. What was discussed? Sally Lemus has the answer. The clarification of the public school system guaranteed no less than 25% of the general revenue of the Commonwealth's annual budget led to an emergency board meeting this morning. Mary Lou Ada, who chairs the Fiscal Personnel Administration Committee, states with this Supreme Court opinion, PSS is owed around $80 million. But during discussion, the board has agreed to move forward and get only what is needed for current school operations. Get the bus gas and also to get the a lot of the taxes pay and the health insurance and also to get the FEMA share so that we can start building uh, Hubwood and also WSR. There's a lot of things that we need so to move forward we need that three million so we can open school 20 in you know, the same way as it is environmentally friendly nurturing for students and also pay attention to the uh, teachers because they're you know some of them have been frozen for three years and people that have worked so hard to get their certification, their master's, their PhD, they cannot get the uh, rightful salary because it's been frozen. Again, those are due to them. So we're looking at every step, but we need to prioritize. You know, not everything can be done at the same time. Ada further explains why receiving the rightful budget is beneficial to PSS. We have been operating under a really minimal, I mean, if you look at the historical allotments from the Sinema government, this is, for the past two years, this has been the lowest, and we have 10,000 students um, during uh, Commissioner Yuna's time, they were getting like 42 million and they only have 7,000. So you see, it, uh, the cost of having schools and running it has increased, but our allotment and our appropriation has not increased it has decreased so we're really running bare minimal other board members did insist to collect the whole amount pss is owed commissioner of uh, education you also have to keep this in mind that we need to have those monies due for us to, we, in order to get back on track with what what we're what we're, our mandate is for our school students ad explains why pss will not demand for the entire amount owed to them due to the fact that the government is still recovering that if we go back and try to reinvent and ask for 25% of the total budget, that means they have to have another budget hearing and reduce all the agencies. We really don't want to do that. We want to work with them that is really workable for both BSS and also um, the Sinai government. So we don't want to be greedy. We know that the case is on our side, but our main concern now that we got this is to really get back to the schools and, and give the teachers their needed raise, the certification that were certified, that they worked hard to get the certification, what's due to them, and really be functional like we did four years ago. This is Ali Lemus for KSPN News. Governor Ralph Torres pays a visit to the Federated States of Micronesia for official business. As chairman of the Board of Governors for the Pacific Islands Development Bank, Governor Torres spent a few days in Ponape for a board meeting discussing economic development initiatives and encouraging private investment into new projects, industries, and activities to expand economic opportunities. FSM President David Penuelo also requested a courtesy visit and was invited for the inauguration of the new governor, Reed Oliver. Press Secretary of the Governor Kevin Bautista explains the importance of ties between FSM and the CNMI cultures and the shared peoples that are, that are living within the Pacific Islands, around the Pacific. Saipan was the former capital of Micronesia before it was a commonwealth. Um, so the historical ties between the island nations of Micronesia is incredibly important. And maintaining that relationship to ensure that we can address mutual 
issues, mutual problems with mutual solutions, collective problems with collective solutions, is important. And that's why, and that's why the governor, through his capacity as the chairman of PIDB, Pacific Islands Development Bank, is in Pompeii under travel funded by the Pacific Islands Development Bank. Coming up, a warning has been issued by the DLNR to vessel operators u utilizing the Outer Cove Marina. We tell you what this means after the break. Mom, are you sure? What about the shutters? And do you have your medicine? Don't worry about us, love, okay? You take good care of yourself. I'm in love. Yeah, sorry. The power went out, so I had to light up all the candles. Yeah. Yes, baby, yeah. yeah I'm just glad our home phone's working and we're able to contact you. Do you have a team or company? Bring them to the Adventure Specialist, Saipan's homegrown Marianas Trekking. Our guided adventures will challenge and excite you, and our award-winning photographers will capture it in a unique and unforgettable way. Check out our off-roading, go-karting, mountain biking, hiking, and snorkeling. And we have top-notch rental gear, too. So bring your team, bring your family, or bring your best friend. Marianas Trekking inside the Mariana Resort. Welcome back to the Channel 2 News. The Department of Lands and Natural Resources is cracking down on operators that are using the Outer Cove Marina and are not paying for the permits. Vessel owners and operators utilizing the Outer Cove Marina may want to make sure they are in compliance with the birthing permits as the Department of Lands and Natural Resources has issued a warning stating they are ready to evict those not following the rules. We issue that notice telling them if they don't comply with that uh, by paying their, the, the birthing fees and the security deposit, then we will evict them. The regulation was established in 1999, and Benevente says while some do pay the fees, many using the marina are commercial operators that do not. These folks have been there making business for the longest time since after Solador, and even before Solador. And they've been doing business, you know, within the outer cove and not even paying anything to the CNMI government for the berthing of their vessels there. And not even a uh, three month security deposit. And this is all regulations that's that's there. The price varies for the berthing fee and security deposit. Benevente says commercial operators are transporting from the outer cove to other areas for drop off and pickup of customers to avoid these costs. Some are running away, uh, around, some they're staying away, some they pick up customers through beach concessions where they don't, there's no charges. And some are running over to the Garapan Fishing Base area because there's no charges there. Well, they're finding ways and they're just going to get away from this payments, you know, stuff. And what happened for all that longest time that they haven't paid since 2015 to 2019, September 30? Nothing. Now that we implemented effective October 1st, 2019 and forward, that they have to start complying with this regulation, they're getting mad. The reason for the crackdown on regulations is due to the safety at Outer Cove Marina. Benevente says there are many repairs that must be made, and funds collected from the fees will go toward fixing the dock. One, we're charging this for a purpose. We're not charging this because we just want to collect no money. No, we want to try and fix this dock. We want to do some repairs, uh, be it that it's very little money. For them, they're saying it's a lot. 
But us, it's very little because we need millions and millions of dollars to really fix that outer cove marina. He says if a boat is stranded without a running engine, it will be towed. But if the boat is already in a spot and has not paid the berthing fee, it won't be getting any commercial use. If their boat, their vessel is there, I will chain it. Okay. I will chain it and not let them use it until they pay. One diving company, Time Creations Corporation, says they do pay their berthing fee and have since they started operating, but states this really could affect those companies that have been operating for years out of the outer cove but aren't paying their permit. I really feel so sad about these people who came before us. They've been there before us. Maybe they've been paying, then they, they have just stopped their payment due to the typhoon. I don't know about others, but we do pay our own. Boats that are without power or engines must be removed from the dock by Friday, January 31st. And boats without berthing permits must be removed by Thursday, February 27th. Questions or concerns may be addressed to DLNR. Reporting for KSPN, I'm Ashley McDowell. Guam's State Historic Preservation Officer got her job back. But was her termination political? KUAM has the details. Afanasi Namai, here's what's making news on Guam. She's one step closer to officially getting her job back as the Civil Service Commission ruled in favor of Linda Uggen. Her attorney believes her termination was not only personal, but, but political. Linda Uggen served as Guam's State Historic Preservation Officer for almost 20 years. She's gone through several administrations. But in June of last year, her new boss, Parks and Rec's Director Richard Abanez, fired her. They just have a million reasons that reasons to want to get rid of her but being a very feisty woman who stands up for herself isn't a reason or justification to lead to her termination she was fired for defending herself in an in a invalid investigation which which in our mind truly was a witch hunt attorney john bell representing Ogan, who appealed her firing to the civil service commission Ibanez terminated her claiming insubordination improper use of a government vehicle and creating a hostile work environment it was also her very first adverse action in almost two decades serving as SHPO. What the commissioners were mostly concerned about is the absence of uh, progressive discipline. They asked the, the ALJ to confirm that there was no pro progressive discipline. The ALJ confirmed for the commissioners that, in fact, Director Ibanez himself said, you know, I didn't try any progressive discipline, I probably should have. They also asked about, um, you know, so these complaints, supposedly all these, everybody was complaining about Linda, where's the record of that? You know, there's no, um, there's no record of complaints. You may remember that at the time of her firing, Uggen was very critical of the military's handling of the ancient artifacts that were discovered on construction sites at Magua and the live fire training range in Machinao. Was her termination really about performance or was it political? So um, Patrick Lujan obviously plays a big role here. Neither me nor my client have any beef with him either. But that's what we think really happened here is it, they want Patrick Lujan, right? He's, he's very close with uh, Mr. Uh, Ibanez from what we understand. He's been the ship before. Essentially, there's a long history there, right, between with Patrick Lujan wanting that specific job. Now this administration, they, it seems that they thought, here, now's our chance. We can get rid of Linda, install who, who we want. Whatever their agenda, they just can't do that. That's, that's, this is not how the merit system works. Although the commission has ruled to reinstate Uggen with back pay, Ibanez can still file a motion for reconsideration or an appeal. We are certainly ready for it. For Guam's News Network, Chris Barnett reports. And stay connected via our KUAM mobile news app. Follow us on any of the social media platforms and sign up for our weekly email newsletter, KUAM Digital Digest on KUAM.com. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Lacanto. Thank you, Nestor. All right, coming up, the holidays are now officially over, and that means holiday tournaments as well. Sports bounces your way next.
watch the Visitor's Channel online, on time, anytime, at SaipanTV.com. Where to go, what to see, what to do, restaurants, spas, activities, and culture, it's all in one place, in high definition, on your mobile device. SaipanTV.com. Check it out. You deserve more. I know it's been hard. Come on, let's go for a ride. Thank you. You're welcome. Now this feels like home. Dial Rent to Own. Making lives better since 1987. When it's sports fans. We're sports fans on Guam at the BCO. U15 CNMI baseball team felt at New Zealand this afternoon, 20 to 9. CNMI, nine errors yesterday, 12 errors today. It's the first game on the big field for them since we didn't have a junior league last year. CNMI falls to 0 and 3. The holidays are officially over now that the TSL Holiday Jam has been played out. The tournament ended with the boys and girls championship games, and for that, we travel to beautiful downtown Guala Rai. Rollers 1 in hot pink versus the Rollers 2. Look how the Rollers 1 pass crisply on the outside and move without the ball. Matthew Richardson, the drop off to Greg De Leon Guerrero, swoops across the lane for the bucket. Keone Dela Cruz out to Derek Antelig. He hits from the trench. These boys, you know, they've been teammates forever. No team rolls more than J. Yart Palms. The spin in the lane for the soft floater. Go ahead, give him a hand. <laughs> Steel means it's break time. Rollers, two, Cowboy Mizutani greases palms. Rollers have so many players in the program. They have multiple teams. Could you call these twos? Too cool, huh? Smooth as silk, too cool. Matthew Richardson, the pull-up, stop, pop, and drop for the Mount Carmel Knight product. Coach Joe Diaz calls the right plays. Rollers, one over the rollers, 258 to 47. The girls' final was a, na a nail-biting, hair-pulling, Breathtaking, gripping, edge of the seat, thriller. All eyes were on this, the final showdown, the clash of the Titanets. Lady Oasis is inbounds, Taza de Leon Guerrero to Leah Rangamar. She drives, Maddie Allegra stuffs her like a teddy bear. Mickey counts ahead to Nana Watanabe, back to Maddie. Oh, that would have made the highlights. Okay. CTSI, Irish Pagarao sees Nana open and she cans the 10-footer. For a seven-point cushion, 12 minutes on the clock in the game. Leah Rangamar with the nifty pass to Cass Camacho. She leaves short rebounds and then goes glass. She was the Mana Rays' best player this season. She got good basketball DNA. Leah launches from the Gualorai suburbs for a three-point bomb, and it was a two-point game. How bad do they want it? You're here, you're here. <laughs> Notice they're more concerned about their water in their hair. When Taja scored, the game was knotted at 36. Getting the lead back for CTSI was as easy as an Emmy Oiterong one step, two step. Watanabe want to score, and the shippers go up by four. Leah, where's she going? Only Leah and her hairdresser know for sure. That made it 40 to 38 with seven minutes in the game. And then the basket shrank for the CTSI girls. I miss Leah. Oh, what had been three pointers before became rebounds for the Lady Olaces. Shots weren't falling, only bodies were falling. The scoreboard froze. Ooh. 
Seemed like after every missed shot, there were collisions and knockdowns. Someone get Irish a pillow. For the game, Connie Camacho. Oh, frustration setting in. Lady Olace has missed nine consecutive shots on that one possession. For the game. No. Who wants it? Anyone? Please. Cass. Oh, she wants it. That ties the game with a minute to go. For the game, Jan's three. Oh, it rims out. Leah's three for the game. Oh, it bounces off. 21 seconds. CTSI goes for the last shot. They hadn't scored in over seven minutes. And there's another miss. Lady Oasis with a chance to win. Oh, no. Cass traveled, and we're going to overtime. Oh, no, wait. They put six tenths of a second on the clock. Time for one shot. Well, I guess not. Now we're going to OT. This game was so exciting, tourists didn't want to leave. Connie with the runner. The Lady Old Aces draw first blood. CTIS draws next blood, but their vial was bigger. The OG player hitting from the trench. Irish, the drive, the determination to succeed. She splits the defenders. You think the next time she tries, they're going to let her do that? <laughs> How's the floor? Dying seconds. Jamie Pangolin makes it a two-point deficit. 27 ticks to go. They get the ball back, but can't make the basket. CTI bags the TSL Holiday Tournament title, 46-44. Here's the wind-up and the pitch. I don't believe what I just saw! Let's roll at Gold's Gym Saipan with group exercise for every body. Total Resistant Exercise, or TRX, helps develop your core and improve strength and Zumba toning is probably the funnest way to get fit. The Shake Cafe is a great place to stop by for a meal replacement or supplements. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. Traveling or laying over on Guam? Don't wait around. Zip into Guam Adventures at Zipline Park inside the Hilton Resort and Spa. Guides will take you through a series of zips, starting with the mountain course and then zip over the ocean with spectacular views of Tumon Bay. Six zip lines and all deliver a thrilling experience and it's family friendly, so bring the kids ages six and up. You'll love the security of double lines and a new braking system to make riding smoother. The towers are named after the islands in the Marianas. We call it the Island Hopper. Your guides will teach you what you need to know to soar through the jungle with a bird's eye view. Best of all, for residents of Saipan, Kenyon, and Rota, you can book this experience at 20% savings. Log on to GuamAdventures.com and during checkout, use offer code HAFA20. Book it and zip it today. We'll even pick you up. Today's high 86 to low 77, just as we predicted last show, if you remember. You do, I remember. Humidity 70% tomorrow, partly cloudy, isolated showers, east winds 10 to 15 miles an hour, high 86, low 76. See 6 to 8 feet. Be careful of rip currents out there, there's advisory. Sunrise 646, high tide at triple aces. And sunset 6 past 6. All right, thank you, Bob, for that uh, weather report. Yeah. I think I'm getting my sign right now. Does this mean we gotta roll yeah. on out of here? You know what this means? Traveling. We gotta travel. You gotta travel All right. on out of here. Well, I gotta travel on out of here, out of this newsroom. Have a great rest of your night. <laughs>